we're all aware of some of the a lot of the different crises and everything that's taking place right now in this country and it's a cry and shame that we have to talk about this and it's also a cry and shame that we have to go through what we're going through and things are only going to start getting worse and one of the main reasons is this diesel shortage now <clears throat> the other day the president took and he um there was three parcels of land that were supposed to be up for uh, renewal i guess on the uh so they could drill i guess their prime real estate and he took those off the market the 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 fuel and stuff that he's releasing from our our backup supply is being not for us he's sending this stuff overseas all right this is going to europe because a lot of the countries have stopped getting their fuel and things from russia which is understandable but the problem i have is we're suffering like crazy here gas prices at an all-time high than they've ever been on average and we're sending our reserves overseas we have what is taking place right now um at the border with all these uh illegal immigrants coming in here now i have stated before in several different videos if people follow the proper procedures and are vetted and they are 100 percent legal to come into the united states i have no problem with that whatsoever i have a problem with all these people that are like rushing the borders and everything else and what's taking place now is they are we have the baby formula crisis major crisis and this is getting a little out of hand all right the plant in michigan is still shut down they're waiting for quote the fda approval to reopen the plant so they can start making more of this product now down at the border now a representative from florida which i live in the state i live in they went to the border down there and took pictures and videos of truckloads of formula down there and they're passing it out to the illegal aliens that are trying to come across our borders meanwhile all of our american citizens here the women that are trying to go out and buy formula for their babies i should say men and women or women whichever way we want to look at it make sure i cover all my bases could be just men who knows but the point is they can't find it it's not on the shelves it's nowhere to be found they're selling it on ebay for boatloads of money which i think those people should be prosecuted for doing that and why is this happening you mean to tell me there's not another company that can actually make baby formula besides abbott really folks we got a huge problem in this country and it's called we can't make anything here we have a huge problem that is taking place that's going to be affecting everybody right down to your baby and what is being done about it the washington post came out with this ridiculous article stating that the government was doing what they're supposed to be doing and that everything that they with, with having all this formula and stuff down there they have to have it there because of you know well we're responsible now for these people when they come across the border so we have to treat them inhumane bs put them back on a bus or a plane and send them back to where they came from if you can't come in here and you're not legal when you walk across the border then you don't deserve to be here follow the process there are processes put in place and follow the process come in here legal and fine if you need some help then we'll help you but we can't just let everybody in from the world come in here and 
give it another <laughs> give it another six months to a year, and these people are going to be wanting to go back to where the hell they came from, the way we're going. You know, us in the United States, the government has always looked out in years gone by, has looked out for America first, all right? And now it's America last. Where do we think this is going? I'm going to tell you where it's going. You're not going to even going to be able to afford to put gas in your car on the track that we're going on right now to go to the store to try to buy whatever kind of food you may be able to afford. All right. Now let's talk about this diesel shortage that is coming up really soon. And I have some inside information on some of this stuff that's coming out in my video tomorrow. So you want to stick around for that one. That'll be out tomorrow at two o'clock Eastern Standard Time. And what is taking place, folks, is the Northeast is running out of diesel fuel. They started trying to bring some in from the Great Lakes and bring that over to try to help ease this a little bit. A lot of truckers are being told already through their, their computer systems and their trucks, their apps and everything else that the two big truck stops where truckers get fuel, which is Loves and Pilot. Anybody that has driven on any interstates, you have seen these truck stops, all right? And they're sending out these messages, and they're already letting these people know that starting this coming week into the following week, there's going to be shortages of diesel fuel. And it's in a lot of different states, and I cover all those states tomorrow in my video. But the point of this being is, okay, one of the biggest things you have to remember is a tractor trailer, a diesel truck that drives down the road that's transporting our goods, whatever they may be. They could be food. They could be household goods. They could be furniture. They could be lumber. Uh, it could be cars, fuel, whatever it is. All right. Most of these trucks average between six and 10 miles a gallon. All right. On standard, it costs them 24 cents a mile to operate that truck. Think about that. OK. Now, let's talk about some prices here. You want a culture shock. All right. The current price right now, today, average price is five sixty five a gallon. I've been telling you people for the longest time, you have to watch that diesel price because that's going to be the nail in the coffin for us here in America, period. And it's coming right around the corner. All right. Last week, a week ago from today, it was $5.56 a gallon. A month ago, all right, it was $5.53 a gallon. It was 501 a gallon towards the beginning of the year. And one year ago from today, diesel fuel prices was $3.16 a gallon. In one year, it's gone up $2.49 a gallon for diesel fuel. How long do you think a lot of these companies are going to stay in business? All these higher prices are going to be pushed to you and me. We're all paying more. You go buy a gallon of milk, it's five, six bucks. You want a dozen eggs? It's what is it? Three, four dollars a dozen now? It's ridiculous. And some of the products and stuff, especially with the produce and stuff, depending on, I mean, and it really doesn't even matter what store you go to. It's starting to look like it's been setting around a lot because for one, a lot of these truckers Unless they're getting paid and they're going to make some money because they have to make money to support their families. And then, unless they're not making money on the load, they're not going to take it. So the load's going to sit there. You see some of your produce isn't looking too hot. 
It doesn't matter if you're going into Walmart, Publix, Winn-Dixie, Kroger, whatever store you have around, you know, stuff just doesn't look like it used to. You know, I mean, uh, crude oil today. All right. Crude oil today is it was it's up. It's plus three dollars and 80 cents today in aftermarket trading. It's up to one hundred and ten dollars and 16 cents. Just prior to this video, just prior to me coming out live. All right. Something else that we need to talk about, too, and how this is all going to roll into this whole aspect of this whole situation that we're in is the food costs keep going up. I was just talking about that. The food price index climbed 1% last month. And that gave us a, a total year over year increase of 8.8%. Now, the real kicker here, folks, is the USDA is saying they expect all food prices to rise between now and the end of the year, another 4.5% to 5.5% this year. On top of the 8.8%. Do you see where I'm going with this? We're talking 13, 14% increase in food. How many people are going to be um, thrown into poverty because of this? Yeah, you may have a job, but by the time that you pay your rent, which in a lot of areas is just skyrocketed, which the bottom's going to fall out of all this stuff really soon. It can't keep going on the route that it's going on. And I'm going to talk about a figure here in a second. But a lot of people, you know, by the time they pay their rent or their mortgage, they put gas in their car to go to work. And if you got to figure if you have kids and you got to pay for daycare, forget it. You know, I mean, now... You're looking at anywhere between 13 and 14 percent by the end of the year increase in normal food costs. You're not going to be able to afford this, folks. This is just getting it's getting way out of hand. Now, let me tell you why I think the bubble is about ready to burst on the old good old market as far as the housing. The housing market is it, it, it can't take too much more folks and uh, there's been some slowing down in certain areas of the country and everything else but the one thing that's really starting to really increase right now is foreclosures For foreclosures in all 50 states there's a total of five or there's a total of 50,759 properties that have already started foreclosure process in the first quarter of this year. That's up 67% from the previous quarter of last year. And that's up 188% from one year ago today. So where do we think this is really going, folks? What is what's going to what, what is it going to take for this to break for us to turn around and say enough's enough. We have women that can't get formula for their babies. We have truckers that aren't going to be able to afford the fuel. And if there's a diesel shortage, they said it's going to start in the Northeast and it's going to work its way across the country. What is that going to do for everything that's still setting at the ports? What is that going to do for me and you? What does that mean for me and you and your families? Where is this country headed? This is something that I'd really like to know. Because it doesn't seem like um, anybody that's uh, sitting in Washington or anything else is really caring about what is actually taking place out here with the people. The people are suffering. The people are struggling. The people are starting to snap. You know, you, you hear of more shootings. You hear of more um, killings. People are robbing places more. You hear of all this kind of stuff. 
people are scared to go to the store anymore to just to try to buy the basic needs that they they so desire or they need. Maybe they need their prescriptions. Maybe they need their medicine. We're going the wrong direction. Our founding fathers and the people that have died for that flag that's hanging on the wall behind me are rolling over in their graves. They never, ever once thought that we'd be in the situation that we're in right now. And all I know is something has to change and something has to change real soon or we're going to be in a world of hurt, folks. That's why it is so, so very critical that if you can, you are prepping, if you can afford it. Because I really think the time for prepping for some people has come and gone. That time has passed us by. I've been trying to get the word out there. I've been trying to make sure that people are aware. That's why I started this channel. I wanted to make sure people were aware. I'm reading into what is taking place. And it's a hornet's nest right now, folks. I have a firm belief and I have a firm feeling that one of these days, things will start to change. Things will start to turn around. When? That I don't know. I worry about my own kids, my grandkids. What are we leaving them? People need to take a step back and really think about what they're doing to this country and how this is affecting more than just people in Washington, people overseas, diplomats, presidents, leaders of countries, whatever you want to call them. When it comes down to it, we the people are the backbone of this country. And without we the people here in America, the government wouldn't exist because they wouldn't have any money. Get it? We've all put in our time or we're putting in our time. You're going to work. You're paying your taxes. The more, the better you do, the better the government likes it because the more money they get. So you go to college, you go for four years to get yourself a degree. You go to, you find yourself a really good job. You're making $150,000, $200,000 a year. Government loves it. They're collecting taxes off that $150,000, $200,000 a year. All these big corporations and everything else. But they don't want to uh, pay their fair share. I'm sorry. These billion-dollar companies, and I work for one of them. You know they're getting cuts on the side. You know they are. You know? I mean, it's just a fact of life. It's what we live in nowadays, unfortunately. But these diesel prices and these diesel shortages are going to affect everything, folks. It's going to affect your Amazon. It'll affect your UPS packages, your FedEx packages, your postal packages, it's going to affect your Walmart, your Targets, all your grocery stores, anybody and everything. It will affect if this goes too far south and it doesn't come back up. Because they have to have that liquid gold in order to run it down the road and get us our supplies and our food and any other things that you do need on a daily basis. So don't think that just because maybe it's not in the storage, you can just go online and order it. It still gets moved by a truck, folks. Don't forget that. It still gets moved by a truck. It's just something we have to be very, very, very 
conscious of, the next few weeks are going to be very, very critical. The next 90 days, you still have China to shut down. We have no idea when that's coming back online. That is a total nightmare over there, folks. I don't know if any of you have watched any of the videos, if you have seen any of the footage of the things that are going on, the people are starting to revolt because they're tired of being locked up like dogs in a cage. Some of them aren't getting fed. They're not allowing delivery of food into certain areas. They built walls all around. Are you serious? I mean, come on. I mean, I know it's a communist country, but these people have had just about enough of this. I can tell you that right now. I, I, I don't know. This whole world is, is going to hell in a handbasket. And maybe uh, Revelations is coming around and maybe some of that stuff is coming forth. If that's the case, I would urge everybody to... Um, Make sure you're good with the man upstairs because you sure don't want to be left down here. Not with the way this place is going. You know what I'm saying? And then we want to know why they want to go to Mars. That's another place for them to destroy. So in an ending, my little talk here, I just want everybody to try and do your part and try to be prepared. Try to do whatever you can. I don't care if you can put up just a couple of canned goods a week, if that's all you can afford, try to do something. Maybe if you have friends that are in a big box store like BJ, Sam's, Costco, something like that, uh, you know, maybe go split orders with them. You know, if you get a, a, a flat of, uh, canned goods or something like that, split it with them, try to save some money, try to come around and, and see what you can do. There's ways you just have to think about it. You have to, right now it's so critical for everybody to just, you, you have to just use your head, set back, take a deep breath. Cause I know a lot of you out there are running out of money and you, it's just the, it's just what it is. But if you sit back and take a deep breath, I'm sure you can come up with some type of an idea on how maybe you can secure a little extra food and supplies for you and your family to help out in any way, shape, or form. I know you can. I have faith in all you people out there, especially all the people that are in this community, which most of these people in this community I know have been prepping. Some of them have been prepping for a very long time. Some of them are new to prepping. Some of them are kind of like right in the middle, but that's fine. The point of it is you'll have a goal and you know what your goal is. You know where you want to be and kind of how you want to be set. I would also suggest that you people really think about trying to grow your own food, something. I'm going to start some videos. Um, on the seed and stuff that I was sent. And I'm going to be doing planters on my back porch. And we're going to start doing that. I've got plenty of seed. I'm going to start growing some stuff. I want to grow some tomatoes and lettuce and radishes and things of this nature, carrots and this kind of stuff. Stuff that's very easy to grow in planters. And I'm sure there's a lot more. I'm used to growing stuff in gardens. When I lived up north, I had a huge, huge garden. I love my garden. I grew everything from pumpkins to corn, tomatoes, peppers, onions. You name it, I grew it. The only thing I didn't grow was potatoes. And I wanted to be doing potatoes in two potato planting buckets that I've bought. Containers, I should say. My potatoes are just about ready. And uh, I got to be getting those in, but I'm going to be doing some videos on that because I believe it doesn't matter if you live in a house, if you live in an apartment, a townhome, a condo, if you have some type of a patio, 
you could grow something out there, even if it's just like some lettuce, um, you know, some some of those type of vegetables, lettuce, radishes, carrots. You probably could do some tomato plants. Those are very small. They don't take up too much room. Pepper plants. It's something. And that's the point. You have to try to get and do something. Because if you think that the government's going to be there when the shit hits the fan to help you out, you're wrong. They're only worried about two things. The government and what's taking place across the water. We don't register anymore. And I hate to say that. That bothers me something fierce to say that. It really ticks me off. I can't really say what I really want to say because I don't want to tick off anybody out there. So I'll keep that comment to myself. But I'm pretty sure that most of you can read between the lines and you probably feel the same way. 